Here now is Simon Puse with some international stories in around the world in five. Turkish forces are stepping up airstrikes and a ground offensive as their incursion into Kurdish-held areas in Syria enters a second day. Explosions in the Syrian border town of Tel Abiyad were visible from Turkey on Thursday as Turkish forces pushed deeper into Syrian territory east of the Euphrates River. Turkey's military said it had seized several designated targets. There are reports of heavy fighting in the central border region while at least seven civilians have been killed. Many more have been injured in the shellings that have occurred at dozens of towns and cities. Tens of thousands of people are reported to be leaving their homes. Meanwhile, police used water cannon to break up a gathering which criticized the military offensive against Kurdish militia in northeast Syria. Turkey says it wants to create a safe zone on the border for many of the Syrian refugees on its territory. A gunman has killed two people in eastern Germany after attempting to enter a synagogue where dozens were observing a Jewish holiday. The suspect broadcast the attack on a popular live streaming platform before being arrested. The video, which has now been removed, showed him making anti-Semitic comments before driving to a synagogue in Halle and shooting at its door. After failing to get in, the gunman shot dead two people nearby. The suspect is a 27-year-old German who acted alone. The country's leader, Angela Merkel, said anti-Semitism had no place in Germany. First and foremost, and I stand before you in the name of this, that all representatives of the constitutional state must use all the tools of the constitutional state to fight against hate, violence and inhumanity, and there must be no tolerance for this. In Ecuador, the protests against the government are growing, with increasing violence as protesters clashed with police near the heavily guarded National Assembly in Cueto. <laughs> Officials say the number of arrests have risen to 570, while it's unclear how many people have been injured in the violence. Ecuador's government sought foreign mediation via the United Nations or the Catholic Church after almost a week of anti-austerity protests that have forced the government to move from the capital. Demonstrators held a national strike after President Lenin Moreno refused to step down or overturn those anti-austerity measures that have triggered the worst unrest in a decade. No, se puede. The democratic system cannot be violated. Constitution cannot be violated. You cannot damage the assets of Ecuadorians and the Ecuadorian people in general, and of course, nor damage the physical integrity of the people. That's why we are here. Indonesia's chief security minister, Wiranto, has been attacked by a man with a knife who police say was inspired by the Islamic State group. The 72-year-old was rushed to hospital in the capital, Jakarta. A police officer and two other people were injured, while two suspects, a man and a woman, were arrested. The 72-year-old ex-presidential candidate suffered two deep wounds to his stomach. The country's president, Joko Widodo, visited the hospital and announced Wiranto was conscious and in a stable condition. People in Japan are preparing for torrential rain and powerful winds as super typhoon Hagibis heads north over the Pacific towards Japan's main island. People in Kyonan town and other towns in Chiba, which are still recovering from a devastating typhoon Faxai that struck a month ago, started to put blue tarpaulins on damaged roofs to try to prevent water leaks. Rugby World Cup organisers have cancelled Saturday's game between England and France, as well as New Zealand's match against Italy due to the risk from the typhoon, while a Sunday game between hosts Japan and Scotland is in doubt. Female soccer fans in Iran entered the country's main stadium in Tehran after being able to buy tickets for a national team game for the first time in 40 years. Women have been banned from watching men's games since shortly after the 1979 Islamic Revolution, with only a few exceptions made for small groups on rare occasions. But under pressure from the world governing body FIFA and women's rights campaigners, Iranian authorities earmarked around 3,000 tickets for them to Thursday's World Cup, Asian qualifier against Cambodia, in the 78,000 capacity Azadi Stadium. And finally, the billionaire brothers that own the Ritz are reportedly considering an £800 million sale for the five-star hotel. The twin brothers David and Frederick Barclay, who also own the Telegraph newspaper and Spectator magazine, bought the Grade 2 listed Mayfair building for £75 million in 1995. According to reports, the 113-year-old hotel has had a number of offers made recently in the region of around £800 million. 
And that's your international news around the world in five. Thank you so much, Gimba. Nigeria Rugby has announced its provisional squad as it steps up preparation for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic qualifiers built for November the 9th and 10th in Johannesburg, South Africa. Team manager Daily Coker disclosed that the squad will be trimmed to a final 12-man roster which will travel to South Africa for the qualifiers. Cooker also said seven home-based professionals and 13 foreign-based professionals made the provisional roster. 14 countries have been listed to feature in the qualifiers and the winner will qualify to the Summer Games come 2020. Nigeria's Golden Eaglets have arrived in Brazil for this year's FIFA Under-17 World Cup, which will hold on October the 26th to November the 17th. Head coach Manu Garba listed 25 players for the trip and four players will be cut from the roster after the preparatory period before a 21-man World Cup squad is unveiled ahead of the opening game against Hungary in Guyana on October the 26th. Now the five-time champions will then clash with Ecuador at the same venue on October the 29th and then Australia in Brasilia on November the 1st. Three-time African champions Nigeria have full capacity in Singapore as they began training sessions on Thursday ahead of Sunday's prestigious friendly with the five-time world champions Brazil. A Stoke City midfielder, Ogana Karetebo, was a late withdrawal from the roster, but all the other 21 players trained on Thursday morning and they will train twice on Friday. Head coach Gennett Rohr has opted not to call any more players following the withdrawal of Atebo and Olaolua Aino as a result of injuries. Now, the German tactician has already replaced defender Kenneth Omero with Tyrone Ebuehi while Efusa Solomon Otabo joined the camp following France-based Samuel Carlos' unavailability. And of course, the women of Iran enter the country's national stadium in Tehran after being able to purchase tickets for a national team game for the first time in 40 years. The women have been banned from watching men's games after the 1979 Islamic Revolution, with only a few exceptions made for small groups on rare occasions. Now, the tickets for a special women's only section of the stadium, a decision that has been criticized by some of the country's campaigners who would prefer women to be able to attend with their male family members. In the end, it was a joyous occasion for the Iranian national team as they beat their opponents, Cambodia, by a wide margin. And that's a wrap on Sports News. I'm Ayo Tunde Balugun. It's back to you, Kim. And the main news again, the Presidential Anti-Corruption Committee chairman today accused the 8th National Assembly of hindering the fight against corruption. As President Muhammad Buhari meets with the committee members and former President Goodluck Jonathan. Also today, the Lagos State House of Assembly threatened to issue arrest warrants for former Governor Kimu Miyambodi and four others over purchase of 820 buses allegedly without due process. And heavy fighting was reported today in northern Syria on the second day of a Turkish offensive into Kurdish-held areas. And that's how it's been on the News at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for being a part of it. It's on behalf of all of us here, Splendid Marches. I'm Gimba Umar. Good night. <laughs>